The first time I heard about the plan was at a company Christmas party. I don't even remember how it came up, but when it did, Liesel and Vin Chung both had sparks in their eyes. There was no time to ask questions that night, but I set up an interview with Liesel immediately to ask her about this plan with a capital P. Our plan. <laughs> so, so we've been doing this plan for, uh, I don't know, like over 10 years. So it's been a while okay. since we started this process. And it started because given I work in business and do business plans, I said, we should have a plan for our life because businesses have plans and then they reflect on how things went. So we should do this. And so then was, he went along with it. Now he's really glad that we do this. And we have different sections of this plan. So okay. we have, what do we want to do by the end of this year, by the end of five years, by the end of 10 years, and then the 30 year goal. This is the How She Moms podcast with Whitney Archibald. I'm a mother of five on a mission to help moms connect with your kids, manage your homes, and create your own unique version of motherhood. I curate ideas from different moms so you can pick and choose what works for you and your family. Before we start this episode, I was just wondering, what's for dinner tonight? If you don't know, you might want to fit my live online meal planning workshop into your schedule this week. You'll walk away with a customized system that fits your personality and your schedule, so you don't have to reinvent the chicken nugget every night. There's one workshop Thursday night, January 14th, at 6.30 Mountain Standard Time, and one at 9 o'clock a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Saturday, January 16th. You can sign up for this workshop and next month's laundry workshop at HowSheMoms.com. Now back to Liesl. I met Liesl in print before I met her in person, in her husband's memoir, Where the Wind Leads. It's an amazing story of how his family escaped Vietnam and were rescued from a desperate situation at sea. It also tells the sweet story of how Vin and Liesl's life together began. Liesl was born on a small farm in South Korea, and her family immigrated to the United States and settled in Arkansas when she was teeny. After reading about the Chungs, I was so excited to get to know both Liesl and Vin in person when my husband started working with the medical practice they co-founded, Vanguard Skin Specialists. Liesl is a super impressive person. She has degrees from both Yale and Harvard Business School and now runs a thriving business as a mother of four. You might think Liesl would be intimidating, but her warmth and compassion leave no room for that nonsense. She's definitely more inspiring than intimidating. I'm really excited for you to meet her today. Let's jump right into this interview from 2019 to find out more about the plan. We always start with the 30-year goal. And we say, all right, what do we want at 30 years? And then from there, how do we backtrack? Because I think a lot of people have a vision of where they want to be over a certain period of time, and then they live their life. But if you're not intentionally staying on a specific path to hit that vision, it's just really easy to kind of drive in whatever direction life takes you. And then you find yeah. that you end up in Kansas instead of in Boston. And so, um, so that's how we kind of started this process. And, uh, and so we created different parts of the plan. So the first section is the personal. So Vin has a set of personal goals. I have a set of personal goals. Then we have a section around what do we want our marriage to look like in 30 years? What do we want our family to look like in 30 years? Then kind of the area beyond our immediate family, extended family, friends, our community. Um, what do we want uh, our professional life to look like? And so we just kind of map out all these different areas of our life. And we do this once a year. So at the end of or beginning of every year, we sit down, we pull last year's plan and we say, all right, what have we done? And we kind of highlight everything we've done. And then we say, all right, what does this coming year look like? And what we find over time is that 30 year picture never changes, but the one year and the five year picture changes quite a bit uh, as our family continues to evolve. And it's because when you look at, um, things that sit at 30 years, it just doesn't change. So like, for example, you know, we have the 30 year goal for our marriage that we want to be best friends, that uh, we want to be deeply in love and just really enjoy spending time together. And so things might change along the way on what that looks like in order to hit that path. And, um, and professionally too, for the 30 year goal, the big vision is, is that we want to be really proud of everything that we've done professionally. So that picture doesn't really change. But then the path right. changed because like 10 years ago when we started, I thought my professional goal was to 
you know, reach partner at my consulting firm and then go off and take an operational role within a company. So, um, so it looked very different from what I'm doing right now. So those things might change just that future 30 year picture doesn't. Right. Okay. I really like that, that big overarching goal. Um, what is, what is your family 30 year goal? So our family 30 year goal is we want to make sure that our children and kind of their families, our extended family loves to get together and spend time together and that our children live lives that are full of meaning and purpose and that they live without fear. And, uh, and our faith is very important to us and so that they live, uh, they live as followers of Jesus. So that's kind of our 30 year picture. That is so beautiful to have that overarching goal to guide all of your other family decisions. I love that. Okay. So what does this physically look like? Is this a document on a computer or is it something you've printed out? It's a word document Okay. with columns and then our rows with our <laughs> sections. I love it. So do you actually go, do you go away? Do you have a couple's retreat type of thing or do you do it at home? So we've done both. And what we find is, is that the best time to do it is at a time when we're both in a really good place um, and we feel very hopeful and optimistic about the future. And so there have been times where we might be going through a hard season. So instead of doing it at the end of December, right at the beginning of January, we don't get to it until like beginning of February because it took us a month to get to just the right place um, to do it. So we feel like it's just really important to be in a place where we're really connected and we just feel really good and hopeful um, in terms of shaping and shaping those goals. So can you give me an example of some, um, say a year, a year goal, one of the benchmarks that you meet? Yeah. So, um, so for example, we have a section which is about our family, like our parents and our siblings. And so um, when Vin's dad passed away last year, it caused us to rethink what we had around the extended family portion of it. And so we set this one year goal around just spending time with our parents. For example, going on a vacation with my parents and then a vacation with Vin's mom and then making sure that we made it back to see Ben's mom a certain amount of time. And so that was kind of a life event that really changed what our one year, kind of the one to five year picture looked like to make sure that we we're making the most of our time with our parents. I love that. Um, how do you feel like the, this plan affects your day-to-day -day parenting? Um, so, so with parenting, now, okay, so Vin and I tend to be very goal-oriented, as you can tell, with like just our planning and wanting to do this. So there's actually a challenge by having this plan, because with the plan, we have things around, all right, we're moving our kids in the right direction, um, we're helping them reach their full potential, and so plans tend to be very achievement-oriented. And so what we also have to be very careful about is making sure that we leave space to play and to enjoy and to do those things, which are very counter to the plan, but we have to be really deliberate about it. And so as we created this plan, and this is kind of a newer thing that came out in the last three years, because our plan was so action oriented, we started working in things around, okay, we have to create space for just time. And you know, part of our plan, it says there, for this year, we will be home every night for dinner. And there might be certain things that come up that might prevent that, but it should be rare. Like we are home every night for dinner. And even if we have to get back on our computers and work after the kids are asleep, there is protected time. So it has forced us in some way to move away from being goal oriented and achievement oriented by kind of creating the goal of space and time and putting that in there. Yeah. And it's still scheduled, but what you do in that time can be more spontaneous, I guess. Yeah. 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 I like that. That's a great tip. So um, do you work with your kids to set personal goals as well? Um, <laughs> so yes, in that, okay. So my oldest son is very goal oriented. And so I actually set personal goals with him in terms of being less goal oriented. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, let's calm down. Let's like, drop some. Yeah, kid. Here. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it really depends on the child. Um, while, uh, you know, while, for example, my daughter, who's very hesitant, I have to try to push her into things to try things and to do things. So one of the goals that we actually set for our oldest son, and we told him this about a year ago, we said, our goal is to see you fail because you need to learn how to fail and fail well. And so <laughs> that's been our goal for the year. I love <laughs> that. And to take risks and fail. Yeah. That's so insightful. I think um, I've been reading a lot about ch children and anxiety. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest things is that parents aren't letting their kids fail. They're catching them and not letting yeah. them learn from their failures. And that's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, you want your children to do as much as possible, to achieve as much as possible, and not be afraid to take risks. But then when they fail to know that that is not, that does not say anything about their self-worth or who they are, like they are still so valuable and so important, regardless of whether or not they succeeded or failed at something. So I think it's trying to strike that balance. The next thing I wanted to know was how Vin and Liesl handled chores. We do have the kids do chores. Uh, and so everyone has their set chores because I want to make sure that they are contributing to the household. So it's things around taking out the trash and shoveling the snow and doing the dishes and kind of all of those things um, that they're responsible for. And then when they reach a certain age, they do their own laundry and, and all of those things. They also have to take care of themselves which means I do not get their snacks for them in the morning. I'll make sure there's a lunch, but snacks and water bottle and things like that, they have to get. And if they forget, they just don't have snacks or water for the day. We're not gonna take it to them for school. If they forget to put their lunch in their backpack, they're gonna have to buy a lunch. They've just forgotten their lunch. So there are certain things that they have to be responsible for. I do, you know, I guess there is one business thing I have them do. So they get an allowance in the way, and they don't get cash. We keep ledger books so that they can learn debits and credits okay. and things like that. And so it's the way that we track things. And then if there are things that they want, um, then they have to save for it. And it's, we just keep track of all of it. So I remember we went on a trip to Florida and Clara really wanted something. And I said, well, that's up to you. That would come out of your money. And so she had to think really long and hard of, is it worth it? Do I want to do this? Especially since I'm saving for a bicycle and make those trade-offs um, in, terms, in terms of that. Because I also want them to be financially responsible. Um, and so we try to start teaching that at a young age. And the reason I have that is because they get an allowance and then they have another section that's their savings and then their um, charity. And so we tell them, okay, you get your allowance and because you don't have to pay taxes, you're gonna put 20 in savings, 20% in your donation area. And then we tell them, you can take it down to 10 and 10 when you start paying taxes, but right now you're at kind of your 60, 20, 20. And so then we're trying to track it down each of those. So then when they decide they wanna give their money to something, we take that out of the charity area. And then their savings, it just builds. I told them they can have it when they go to college. So that just, yeah. and then their yeah, you know, awesome. other 60% is what they're using to save up for things. It's clear that service is a strong value in your family, both charity and service. What goals have you set for your family in terms of service? And how do you involve your kids in that value yeah. that you have? Yeah. Um, so especially as they get older, we want it to be something that they do out of, because what we're trying to do is shape their hearts, not their actions. And so given that, we really try to encourage what it is that's coming from their hearts. And it's looked different for each child um, based on just how they're wired. And so, for example, for Caleb, starting when he was 10, he got really excited about running for Team World Vision and for clean water. And as I think about it, it fits so well with who he is, too, because he's very action-oriented and goal-oriented. He's not an athlete, but I think this idea of I'm going to run, I'm going to raise money, this is how many kids get clean water, it just appeals to him. Um, and then he's asked if he could start volunteering at, uh, at a nursing home. And so he's started doing that. Again, appeals to him because he loves to just like sit and learn and hear people's stories. And so it, it kind of fits who he is. Um, Luke uh, is very different from Caleb. He's our second. And he just has this really kind heart where he just connects with people. And so he asked if he could start sponsoring a child. And so 
his entire oh. allowance every month goes to sponsoring a child. And then he now works oh. at Vanguard uh, six hours a month because he wanted to sponsor a second child, didn't have the money. And I said, okay, you work six hours a month and I'll pay for your second child. And so he writes letters to these two kids who were in Rwanda and it is a very personal relationship for him. Like I remember when one of his kids, Eric, got malaria last year. Luke was very upset. He was crying because he was upset yeah. to news that Eric had malaria. And so for him, it's been through this kind of let me go work, let me send things to Eric and Aline. And it's like they're his little friends because they're just such an active part of his life and he's always checking the mail. So it just looks different for him, you know, and then like Clara and Timmy will just take them to things because they're still young. But our hope is, is that as they get older, it will grow out of what's in their hearts as opposed to just, hey, let's check the box and make sure that we're serving. Um, but that they develop parts where they have a desire to serve. I wanted to end with this message about teaching kids to serve. I love that service is integrated all the way through the Chung's plan. Revisiting their plans and values helps them make sure that those big goals don't get overshadowed by day-to-day -day logistics. I hope that's the one big takeaway you get from this episode. You don't have to do an official retreat and map out the next 30 years like the Chung's do, although maybe some of you will follow their lead. But the beginning of a new year is a great time to just take a few minutes to think about your big picture values and make sure you're taking steps toward fulfilling your own plan with a capital P. Thank you for listening to the How She Moms podcast. If you like it, tell a friend. The bigger the community, the more ideas. There are lots of ways you can add your ideas to the How She Moms community. We have a Facebook group where we share ideas about upcoming topics and help each other solve problems we're facing in motherhood. You can also follow How She Moms on Instagram for quick tips and ideas. And you can go to HowSheMoms.com where you'll find transcripts of episodes and lots of other great resources. Special thanks to my mom, Susan Singley, for recording my theme music. She played this song all the time when I was growing up, and to me, it's the soundtrack of motherhood. <laughs> <laughs>